Okay, I'm just going to show you how to create um, a dimension style and also a sub-dimension style or, or um, children as they call them. Uh, all right, so basically, uh, uh, this is just an example we were using earlier. It doesn't matter what you've got there. Uh, you would normally create this in your template file so that it's there every time. But just to show you how it all works, you will start off with um, a you know, this is standard ISO 25, so it doesn't matter what you start off with, and you go new. So let's start off with that. Give it a name. I usually, because I'm going to set it up to AS 1100, I'll call it AS uh, 1100. All right. So also, I prefer to use the notative uh, dimensions and text and all that sort of stuff, which works basically with your scale down here. So you don't have to worry about converting the text height. Uh, also reduces the amount of uh, dimension styles you need to have, I mean, to basically down to one. It also reduces the l number of layers you need to have. You know, you don't need to have a layer for one is to two, one is to five, one is to ten, one is to It's just one layer would work for everything. So uh, it makes everything um, uh, simpler. All right. Um, if you dimensioning in, in paper space, it doesn't matter. You could just you don't have to have it as um, a notative because it it just uh, in paper space everything is one is to one anyway. Uh, it's only if you want to dimension in model space or write text in model space. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to have it in a, on a notative even if you are dimensioning in paper space. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. So I might as well go for the best option, which will cover everything. So we'll continue with that. All right. So there it is. So we pop into this uh, section here, and then we uh, basically only looking at a, a number of uh, uh, areas that we need to satisfy for the AS1100. One being uh, this thing here, the origin offset, which is basically uh, that the gap between the the line there and and the object. So that little gap in here we're talking about. That's got to be one millimeter. All right, and. Um, if you if you're say an architect for example they usually use fixed length so that uh, which means basically cancels this here it means the length of this line shall be the same length all the time in uh, engineering we don't we we don't use that option all right so let's go back to this here now uh, symbols and arrows basically this is uh, another area you want to change which basically that should be three according to the standard and uh what else do we have here um text okay so we get to text uh, if you look at the example that I have on um, on line for you um, we're down to well this is what we've got to achieve basically a dimension style of that which is a notative and have angular di diameter and radial all right so um, we've done we've done this bit here which was the uh, well the line work we've yeah that, that basically we just change that there. Extend beyond lines is another thing which I missed out actually. So let's just uh, check that. Extend beyond lines, there should be two. All right, so that's two. Which is basically the little gap, uh, or that, that line from there to the end back here. All right, that area there. All right, so oh, pressing the wrong button here. All right, so let's go to that. All right, symbols and arrows, three millimeters is what we want. Um, all right, let's keep going down. All right, here I usually have a setup like this. This um, you can move the text independently that way if you've got it set up that way. So that's under the fit. So let's go to fit, and um, the top and the bottom is what I've got there. All right, what else have we got here? We've got text. We said that's two and a half millimeters high text. All right, so let's do that. And you can change the text height only if you haven't set a text height in your dimension style. Now, I've, uh, sorry, in your text style. Here's your text style. I, I would rather have the, a special text style for your dimensions, and so I'll create a new one. So let's go a new one. Let's call it uh, AS1100, or you can call it dimensions or dims or whatever you want to call it. Um, that the name doesn't mean anything. Oh, it already exists, it says. I must have tried to create it a bit earlier. Anyway, uh, this one here. Uh, so I'll just show you how I fixed that. Basically, as I said before, you're going new. You come in here, you, you name it AS1100. Sorry, I wasn't able to do that because it's this one in here I didn't realize. But once um, you've got it there, basically what you need to do is change the font from TXT to Arial. And that's all I did. Never put it, well, I, I never put a zero. I never put a number in there. Because if you put a number in here, it means uh, 
okay that, that'd be grayed out and you can't change it. Uh, so basically uh, what it means is that you, um, you know, if you wanted to create another dimension star, for example, so you, this might be your AS1100 for your um, anything less than an A1 size, according to the standard. If you wanted to create another one called AS1100 for A0 and a B1 and whatever, those bigger size sheets, which your text height shall be 3.5, 3.5, well, you, you shouldn't have to recreate a new, you shouldn't have to recreate a new um, textile just for another dimension that you want to add. You know, and this is not, this is not uh, taking into consideration that you may, in fact, if you weren't using a notative, don't forget, you would have had to create. Um, uh, no, you probably the textile is fine. For, for that, no, you just create new dimensions. The text, style, the text size stays the same, even if you're not annotative. But in this example, if we wanted to change it to 3.5, we can if you wanted to make a, um, a different text style. So the, the whole reason is that I have not put in a number in here, all right? So that's zero. All right, so we'll just, ch just change that there. Uh, did we make it annotative? Um, it doesn't matter because the whole dimension style is annotative, but you might as well do that because at the end of the day, um, if you want to use that AS1100 to write some notes, which you probably will later on, at least it's already annotative. All right, so that's done. Okay, so we're moving on. Uh, primary units. So if we look at our little thing here, primary units, uh, might be next. Yeah, here we go. <coughs> And we're changing this to period that can stay round off to that. It doesn't matter. That's set precision to zero. Where's it? We're done. Scale. Um, all right. So, so change this to a period there. Uh, this to zero. Well, round off doesn't really matter because that's um, already uh, the precision is set back to nothing. Um, now it depends on what you're doing, because you, if you if you are looking at you know right down to 0.25 of a millimeter sort of thing, depending on what you're building, you want to uh, have some precision perhaps if you're building small components, you know. Uh, so that that depends on the job. It doesn't really matter if you're using round figures. It doesn't really matter because it if you have it like that, it'll just if you have say 14 millimeters exactly it will show it to you as 14 millimeters. So having precision doesn't, oops, um, round off one zero, round off on me. Um, it doesn't really matter. So uh, that can be changed any time if you want to modify stuff. So that, that can stay like that, it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got scale factor, that stays like that. And that's about it there. Um, there's a lot of other settings in here which you don't use. Uh, let's go back to this. All right, so we've got the period, we've got that uh, precision zero decimal degrees. Do we change the decimal degrees? Yes, it's already there. All right, so going down, alternate units, we don't do anything there, and we don't do anything in tolerancing of, you know, for this sort of work. But then we get subdimension styles. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so subdimension styles. Let's just okay that. There's another spot which uh, I'm looking at here. Yeah, here. Make sure that's an idea. That should have come through already as, as low that under fit. Um, all right, so you don't have to specify scale there. Done. All right, so I'll just okay that for a minute and you can see what I've got. I've got that there. Now I want to create this subchildren underneath. So we want to have um, basically based on the dimension style I set, basically what I, s ooh, did I say that? Let's have a look. Um, maybe I missed something where the text is um, here. I'm not sure that I got that bit for you. Let's just have a look at the text. That should be above and centered. Yes, that's correct. So above and centered. So above and centered, that's good. So what we're saying, the text is above the line, which you see there, and also centered along it. So, all right, so, um, okay, so if you wanna do like this one here, see that there? We might want that text to be horizontal for the radial dimension. So why should we create a brand new dimension just for radius as such, or radii? So we say, well, look, when we press the radius 
command, you should go and pick up the subchild called radius. And I'll tell you what the different options are that I want to set just for that only. But base it on the parent one, which is AS 1100. Okay, so what we're going to do is create a new one again. All right, this time we're going to be basing it on the AS 1100, but it's going to be a radius dimension. All right, once I do that, that you don't have to give a name here. We'll just continue. Everything else is the same. All we're changing is the text to be uh, horizontal or as ISO, um, they're, not, they're not too different. I'm not sure what I specified in here. I think it's the horizontal really. And uh, so that's how you do them. Again, there's a missing step uh, here, uh, which is the same step as above pretty much. Uh, but uh, where are we? The step missing is here. I'm not, you got a new and then you base it on the on the other one. All right, so we'll do a couple more of those. I'll show you. So that's been done now. So I'll go, okay, that's all I'm changing there. We'll do another new one. All right, we're going to base it on, uh, so this, this time it's going to be diameter. All right. So that's what you do there, continue. And again, just change it to horizontal there. And what's the other one we had? Uh, angular, wasn't it? So, okay, that, do some angular. So we're going to pick the angular one, it'll do something else. New, angular, so let's go for angular dimension down here. Angular, there we are. Okay, continue that. This one here, it will be, I uh, love that's fine, aligned. But what I want with the uh, angular ones is to, oh, the precision for that. Here, uh, you might want to have like 25.5, so you want to have a, a bit of a, a decimal there like that. That's the only thing I really change here. Okay, I don't think there was anything else in here for the angular ones. That's the diameter. Uh, that one there is back to front. Okay, I don't know the angular ones, uh, even if I've done those, but um, here it is aligned. Um, yeah, it doesn't show us actually the uh, that little bit in here in the instructions. All right, so that's missing by the look of it. All right, so that's basically what you do with that one, just under the primary units. All right, it's okay that. Now you've got all of them set up, you can use them. So if I close that, I can now the way you use them if you're going to be dimensioning in model space, and this is uh, probably going to be printed at one is to one hundred, so it's a different scale. But you set your scale first, say hundred. And I can pick up the dimension style here. That's all good. I can sort of work out what that is. Make sure you have the right layer as such. There you go. That's 29 meters. All right. So um, that's 1 is to 100. So if I go to uh, here, uh, I'll do the angle in there, for example. I'll pick up the angular. So if I want to work what that is, click that, and I click that. It puts that is 40.2 degrees. There it is. All right, so again, they should be done in the right layer. Uh, let's have a look at um, what's the other one? I do radius. We haven't got a radius uh, thing in here, but we can do a little circle here uh, just to demonstrate that. So I can go and annotate that. Pick the radius uh, dimension. Here it is, and I can just drop that up here. Okay. There you go. <coughs> so what else do we have? Um, let's do the diameter here. Now this one is, um, <laughs> if I take off the ortho, oh, it's not on anyway, is it? This one's just going everywhere. All right, so that's a bit different to what he was showing on the, there we go, we'll put it that way, let's move it. It hasn't got that underline in it. And uh, that's probably got to do with my uh, original parent uh, settings. Uh, they generally are the ones under, uh, well, there it is. Um, they're these ones here that control that. Um, okay, I can't find them. Let's go into AutoCAD. <coughs> This one's here, this setting's here as to whether there's a line underneath or you draw a dimension line with a leader or without. 
you know, so you can work around with those if you want to have that underline. And for example, if you just want it for uh, your, um, uh, only for the subchild, so this one here, you go here and modify that. All right, so you're only modifying that and you're setting the settings for that uh, to be something else. You know, uh, when text is, is not within default, no, that's probably the wrong one. Um, anyway, I, I, I sort of muck around with this and, and I don't always uh, get it right the first time. <laughs> um, so we'll just leave it at that and see what happens with that one. We're running out of time, so I'll just stop this thing here.